My dearly beloved in Christ, I would like this morning for the sermon to speak about the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, and this will be the first of a series of sermons over the next three Sundays. And I decided to do this because, especially as I teach our students, I reflect upon the fact that they have no awareness of what the Novus Ordo Mise is. And by the grace of God, probably the majority of our parishioners have never been to a Novus Ordo. And I think it's very important for us to understand what it is, how completely wrong and opposed to the true Mass it is, so that we are forewarned and we, we realize it, the error. And I mention this because every now and then I hear the tragic news that a faithful parishioner for many years, someone who attended exclusively the Tridentine Latin Mass, went over to the Novus Ordo Church. And I think to myself, how on earth could that happen? It is only because they don't understand what the true Mass is and what the Novus Ordo is, a mockery really, of the true Mass. And so I want to go into the Novus Ordo Mise so that you understand it, but we're going to begin with an understanding, begin today, by discussing the true Mass. What is the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass? And notice we always refer to it as the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, because the Mass is a sacrifice. So let's begin there. What is a sacrifice? Now, we use the term sacrifice for many things. When you have to give up something you want, you will say, well, I made a sacrifice. Our Lady said to the children at Fatima to sacrifice yourself for sinners, to make sacrifices for sinners. So that's a a meaning of the word that we commonly use. But when we're going to talk about the formal meaning, the strict sense of sacrifice, we are referring to an offering by which a victim is taken and destroyed to give honor to Almighty God. And this concept of immolating a victim for the honor of God is, you might say, impressed on our human nature, on our consciousness, because we see it done from the very foundation of the world, the very first family, Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. And we read in Genesis how they offered sacrifice. Cain was a farmer. He offered the produce from his labors. And Abel was a herdsman, and he offered a lamb, or lambs. Now, we also read that God rejected the sacrifice of Cain but he was pleased with the sacrifice of Abel. And we don't know exactly why, but we presume that Cain offered the leftovers. He offered the fruits that he didn't really want, whereas Abel offered the best of his flock to God. But once again, notice this sacrifice. Who told them to offer sacrifice? It was something that their human nature incline them to do, to give honor and glory to Almighty God. After the great flood, what is the very first thing that Noah did after the flood? He built an altar and offered sacrifice to God. Thanksgiving for his preservation from the deluge and that of his family, and in atonement for sin and in adoration to Almighty God, These are the four purposes of sacrifices, adoration, thanksgiving, atonement, and then, of course, petition. The four ends for which the Mass is offered, because the Mass is a sacrifice. So as I said, human nature understands the need to give worship to God. And so we find even pagan tribes and peoples offering sacrifices, sometimes even going to the absurdity of human sacrifice. But why would they offer various things to God? Because of their awareness of their indebtedness to their Creator. Now, with Moses, Almighty God himself gave very detailed instructions about how he was to be worshipped in the Old Testament. 
what types of sacrifices were to be made, who was to offer them. God told Moses to take his brother, Aaron, and consecrate him as the first high priest. And then there were the other priests and the Levites to assist Aaron in the worship of God. And there were sacrifices every day. Some of these sacrifices were of fruits, incense, wine. Others were sacrifices of animals. And again, it was a very detailed instruction that you can read in the books of the Old Testament, especially Leviticus and other books in the Old Testament. So this was done throughout the Old Testament from the time of Moses up until the coming of our Lord. And when our Lord died on the cross, the veil in the temple was rent in two from top to bottom to show that the sacrifices of the old law had passed away. In fact, those sacrifices in the old law would have had no merit, no value, except in view of the future sacrifice of our Lord on the cross. Because that was the perfect sacrifice. And notice that the sacrifice of our Lord on the cross was a true sacrifice. Because you had a victim, which was Jesus himself, the Son of God. You had a priest to offer the victim that was also our Lord. And he immolated himself on the altar of the cross, the wood of the cross. So the Mass was indeed a sacrifice. And the night before he died, at the Last Supper, our Lord instituted a new sacrifice, the sacrifice of the new law. And he changed bread and wine into his body and blood. And he told the apostles, do this in remembrance of me. So he instituted the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So what is the Mass? The Mass is the unbloody renewal of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. And we must always remember that, essentially, what the Mass is. A sacrifice, the renewal of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. And imagine every day the holy sacrifice of the Mass being offered, Christ offering to his heavenly Father his life, the perfect sacrifice. Without that, the world would indeed merit to be punished severely by Almighty God for its crimes. But every day there is that propitiatory sacrifice of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And this was prophesied in the Old Testament some 400 years, four or 500 years before Christ. There was a prophet named Malachias. And this is what he said. From the rising of the sun, even to the going down, My name is great among the Gentiles, and in every place there is sacrifice, and there is offered to my name a clean oblation. And that's Malachi chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. And I think to myself, how strange those words were to the ears of the Jews before the time of Christ. Because they had been taught that there could be sacrifice in only one place, And that was the temple. We know that on Pentecost Sunday, there were Jews from every nation under heaven, it says in the Acts of the Apostles, that had gathered in Jerusalem and therefore were there when the Holy Ghost came upon the Apostles. And why were there Jews from all these nations under heaven? Because they could not have sacrifice in their cities, in their countries, so they went to Jerusalem. They made this pilgrimage at certain feast days. Now, the Jewish people had in their various towns, like we know our Lord taught, in the synagogue of Nazareth. And a synagogue was a meeting place where they would gather to pray, to read the scriptures and have them explained. But they could only have sacrifice in the temple in Jerusalem. But again, when our Lord died, the veil of the temple was rent in two to show that the old law was over. And now there is no sacrifice pleasing to God except the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So this is the first thing we must understand with the Mass. Fundamentally, what it is a sacrifice. The unbloody renewal of the death of our Lord on the cross. And his passion and death are 
remembered in every Mass. St. Paul, in his first epistle to Corinthians, says those words, as often as you eat of this bread or drink of this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. So that idea of our Lord's death is is called to mind. Again, St. Paul says in today's epistle, our Lord died once for sin and he dies no more. But his death on the cross is represented by the separate consecration of bread and wine because on the cross our Lord shed his blood. So the Mass is the unbloody renewal of that sacrifice. Again, symbolized by the separate consecrations. And it is the perfect sacrifice that pleases Almighty God, the Heavenly Father. We should treasure every Mass that we can attend. We should make certain that we attend with attention and devotion. Use your missal, or if you have not a missal, to pray perhaps the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary, or to meditate upon the passion of Christ, to offer prayers of adoration, thanksgiving, reparation, petition, but to attend the Mass with the utmost devotion and attention, understanding what it is, the greatest thing on earth, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And think about this as well, what Malachi said in the prophecy, that in every place there is sacrifice. The Mass goes on all over the world, wherever there is a true priest offering the true Mass, So we might be asleep in the middle of the night, but there is a Mass being offered in Europe or in Asia or wherever, wherever the Mass is to be found. So continuously, we refer to the Mass as the continual sacrifice because given the different time zones, it is offered continuously throughout the world. Now, knowing this, the devil has always sought to destroy the Mass. Martin Luther, in particular, detested the Mass. And so he changed it. But the Lutherans, under Martin Luther, still used what were Catholic churches. They no longer used an altar. They brought in a table. And he changed the name. He called it the commemoration of the Lord's Supper. And changed around the wording and so forth. And changed the Mass. And that is exactly what has been done since Vatican II the Novus Ordo Mise. And it's important that we understand it because it is an abomination. It is a rejection of the true Mass. It is simply a meal, commemoration of the Lord's Supper. It is a Protestant service. It is displeasing to Almighty God. But the holy sacrifice of the Mass, which alone pleases the Heavenly Father, We unite ourselves with the priest. We offer our lives, our sacrifices, our daily duties with the priest as he offers to the Heavenly Father the one perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ, in an unbloody manner every day in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. May we always treasure and appreciate Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. (laughs) 